folks, welcome back or welcome for the first time to those of you who've not met me before, not seen any of my videos on my channel. I'm Catherine, I'm an artist based in Liverpool, which is in the northwest of the UK on the northwest coast. This is my studio and we're going to go and take a peek. Yes, it's a bit of a mess. So it's been 12 months now since Covid invaded all of our lives in one way or another and for me it meant that my face-to-face -face creative arts classes that I used to teach they pretty much got cancelled overnight uh, and everything was forced to go digital. I recorded these to kind of replace those face-to-face -face workshops to still share my knowledge and my creative processes with people who are interested and really to show how easy it is, how easy, how much it benefits you in terms of well-being. You know, creativity is such a great distraction. I read a Picasso quote the other day about creativity washing away the dust of everyday life. I thought that was a really beautiful thing to say. So in this instalment today, this latest video, I am going to talk about and do a demonstration on lino cutting tools talk about the tools itself and there's lots of them out there, talk about the different shaped blades and about mark making and how it's, lino cutting is a bit like drawing, you know you've got to have this variety of characteristic marks that, that build up and work together as a group, group to create that image. There's so many different varieties out there, as you can imagine there's really budget tools, mid tools and super super expensive ones and yes there's a difference, of course there's a difference. Do I think that a $50 or £50 lino cutting tool is five times better than a $10 or £10 cutting tool? No. It's a lot about the, the, the user, it's a lot about how the tool is used. I think what I'm trying to say is can you produce some great work with a cheap tool? Yes absolutely. Can you produce some rubbish work with amazing tools? Absolutely. Just getting the expensive tool doesn't make your work fantastic. So the two go hand in hand, a decent tool and the way you use it and teaching yourself the best ways how to use it. The tool that I include in the majority of my kits is a beginner's tool. I'm not going to lie, it's a student quality and I sourced it from an educational um, arts supplier. Um, it, perhaps not the sharpest on the market but hey if you're a beginner I think it's fine because the lino that I include in my lino cutting kits is the softest out there you can't get it much softer so the fact that my blades aren't that sharp isn't that big of a problem and in fact I've found it's better as a beginner not to have too sharp of a tool for kids too you know age 10 upwards they're, they're fine doing, doing lino cutting supervised uh, the best analogy I can give you is um, would you give would you teach uh, a trainee chef to cut a carrot with a, a 500 pound sushi knife? Look at it that way, you don't necessarily need the best tools at the beginning. I'd say while you're having a go and working it out and trying out the different blades, whether you like it or not, the beginner's student quality tool is fine and maybe look to invest in something in the future. And this is the tool that we're going to do the demonstration with today. So I'm not going to go into crazy detail about the different shaped blades and I'll talk about them when I come to do the demonstration. However, what I will say is that generally, and they're sometimes called profiles, for lino cutting, generally we use V-shapes and U-shapes or what's known as liners or the V-shape is the cutter, the outliner, or the half moon shape is more of a scoop shape, it's called a gouger. And really, when you think about how you are going to approach lino cut, of course, you can do, you can just approach it without any, any of these formal considerations. You can just do whatever, you, whatever you want is fine too. But it is good to know that the the outliners, the V's, are really more for detailing and characteristic and grouping marks together, or maybe cutting one section away from the other. In terms of, for example, a moon away from the rest of the sky, you would cut the outliner, and then the gougers. The, the U-shaped, more like a boat, I would say that's more for taking away surface area. So it's for taking away the what you would call the non-image area of the lino. And lastly, I just want to share a little bit of the information that is provided with um, a lino cut tool set that I bought last year, which is amazing. It's an American brand called Flexi, Flex Cut Carving Tools. And I would say if you're going to do it quite often, it's worth investing in something like this. But I hope it's okay because I, I literally couldn't have put it better myself than what they've written in their little booklet. Relief printing is based on a reductive process 
carve the non-image away from the flat level surface surface sorry and ink the remaining top surface with a roller or brayer which we know about the process has this is a bit that i like the process has a visual strength in the balance and black and white shapes with additional areas of texture and line to moderate the harsh high contrast appearance inherent with the oversimplified approach is good though hey the quality character and success of the printed image greatly depends on how the cuts are made not only in terms of the actual physical removal of the material but also the use of the characteristic marks that each tool makes each tool profile shape is used to create the specific image desired in the material being carved the depth of cut the direction of cut and the grouping of the characteristic tool marks can greatly enhance the presence of an image which is just really nicely put and very specific I guess about how to go about it but, but there you go I thought that might help. Let's get started.